Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to look at another collaboration beer. This one is half Spanish on the home side and half English on the away side. And both of the breweries involved here, I've reviewed for you on the channel before. The Spanish brewery we get fairly regularly here in Sweden and the English brewery, I reviewed a good few of their beers when I was in Durham for the year uh, back, what was that, 2017, 2018, if I remember correctly. But um, yeah, definitely cool to return to both of these breweries I have to say. So for the home side then we are going to go down to Barcelona in Catalonia in the northeast of Spain and we're having a look at another beer from Garage Beer Company who are very well regarded from what I gather. This particular beer is called the Pisata Steaks and it comes in 8% ABV, a double IPA and this one is brewed in collaboration with Verdant Brewing Company who are one of the really well respected hazy New England IPA type breweries from England. So um, yeah, you'll find them down in Falmouth in Cornwall in the southwest of the country. They've got some really really nice stuff actually but it's been a while since I've had one of their beers and um, so this beer arrived here in Sweden on the 13th I think it was of March 2020 through the Tilfelid sortiment small parties whatever you want to call it in Seistenbolaget like and this one it was actually recommended to me either by Mr Solberry Andreas Solberry on Instagram or uh, Matthias Bulin, one of the he is the beer hedonist um, so these are two Swedish guys that I talked to on Instagram, very nice actually, and they keep me up to date with all of the, the stuff that's coming in through the, the small parties and things like that. They're very up to date on that and tell me, oh, you need to try this one. I think what they do is they order a lot of the stuff in through glass banking because they get it before Seistenbolaget like and then they tell me, oh, review these when they come out through uh, Seistenbolaget. Like so their input to the channel, of course, is hugely appreciated and make sure you go and check them out on, uh, on Instagram, I believe. Um, Andreas's handle is M R S O L B E R G. There might be an H in there between the O and the L, I forget exactly, but then Matthias's handle is Beer Hedonist. So make sure you check them out. Very, very nice guys, and their photography is pretty good as well, actually. But I need to make sure at one of the festivals. I catch up with them and have a beer because they've, you know, they've recommended a lot of things to me, which is hugely appreciated. But this is one, either one of them or both of them were telling me that this is a beer I should check out. And, you know, knowing them, it probably will be really damn good. So thank you for the recommendation. But yeah, as always with my reviews, then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery websites, the links to my other reviews that I've done from Garage Beer Company my other link and my other reviews of that as well that I've done from Verdant Brewing Company. Hopefully I can add to both of those lists in the fairly near future but it is more likely that you'll see Garage Beer Company before Verdant. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Spanish Spanish beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for all the English beers. Those are being added to whenever I get the opportunity. I do hope that I can get down to Barcelona at some point and take a look there. Um, but as always, do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Garage Beer Company then, on to my brew notes. We'll start with them since they are the home brewery. So Garage Beer Company are based in Barcelona and the company was founded back in 2015 by Alberto Zambelin and James Welsh who founded a beer bar together. So the two met during a brewing course that was taught by Steve Huxley who is a well-known Liverpudlian that moved to Barcelona back in the 1970s in Catalonia. So James is English and he comes from a background in the tech sector, in the IT sector, while Alberto is Italian and he worked in advertising and design. But the two managed to set up their brewery in only a few months and you can find it in the Example district of Barcelona, if I've pronounced that correctly. I've never studied Spanish, that's my next language after I finish with the Swedish and Japanese. I would love to have a go at Spanish actually. Um, but in their brewery they have a Bulgarian brew kit that can produce 1200 litres of beer per time and they're also interested in art as well. So the brewery and bar 
are always hosting a lot of different events and displaying lots of artwork from local artists in the Barcelona area. In 2016, they also did a round of crowdfunding which allowed them to open a new production facility as well. This brewery opened the following year in 2017 and from there they've been able to expand their capacity, of course, and start exporting across Europe. I believe they still use the smaller brewery for doing pilot batches and things like that and um, but they are exported now across Europe and to America and they've been brewing some sour beers in the original brewery as well on the small scale which is pretty interesting but as of March 2020 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced over 200 different kinds of beer which is pretty impressive actually but as we know the Spanish beer scene is really taking off there's a lot of really good beer in Barcelona these days it's one of the cities that I really want to go and visit actually I'd love to go and have a little look around Spain Spain because it's, it's just somewhere that I've never been and would really really like to go so that's definitely something that I'll be trying to do at some point in the uh, the fairly near future so um, yeah keep an eye out for more Spanish beers I have there is a good follower uh, of the, the channel um, I want to say his name is Manuel he comments on a lot of the Spanish um, the Spanish beer reviews that I do and he's offered to show me around Barcelona and things so I need to take him up on that at some point so shout out to him for his um, for his contributions to the, the channel over the last little while as well. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about uh, Garage Beer Company. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about the different types of beers that they've done. So um, yeah, on to the English side of things then, Verdant Brewing. So as I've told you before, Verdant Brewing are based in Falmouth and Cornwall, and they were founded back in 2014 by Adam Robertson and James Heffron and they were later joined by Rich. So Adam was a designer by trade and James had been a home brewer for a number of years while Rich was an electrician who actually helped them build the brewery and decided that he wanted to join them and so he did so buying a share in the brewery and becoming a partner. So they ordered their brewing equipment back in 2014 and they started brewing their beers the following year in 2015 but initially they struggled to get their beers recognised in Cornwall because of the traditional ale culture it's down there that the Cornish tin miner ales and things like that and um, but across other parts of the country their beers proved to be a really big success and they are now starting to get into or well they have been the last couple of years I guess I should say they have started to see some success in their home county if you like so they're currently based in the Tregonigi industrial estate in the west of Falmouth and this brewery was upgraded to a 16 hectolitre six, uh, system with a weekly brew capacity of 8,000 litres of beer um, but later they opened up a brewery, a, a restaurant bar if you like on Key Street in 2018 and this was after a crowdfunding campaign and they're now currently working to open up a new brewery in Penryn which will be fitted with a 35 hectolitre system uh, and hopefully, I think they are just about to open that as of March 2020, I think they are just putting the final touches on that at the moment um, but they've produced around 75 different kinds of beer according to Untapped as of March 2020 but these guys are one of the very well regarded sort of hazy New England IPA producers in England. These guys, Cloudwater, Dea, um, Wylam, you know, these guys are the sort of big four. Uh, Magic Rock, I think you can kind of consider them in that bracket as well. North Brewing are getting a lot of plaudits these days as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of really good breweries in England when it comes to the hazy New England IPAs these days. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Verdant Brewing. It's nice to be able to review one of their beers on the channel here again. Um, I think I actually can't even remember what the last beer I had from Verdant was, but they've got some very, very good stuff. Probably the best beer that I've had from them so far would be the Pulp. That's a really, really nice one actually. So um, yeah, if you get the chance to try some of the Verdant beers, I think you will very, very much enjoy those. But um, yeah, so if you want to learn more about Verdant, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. Hopefully with this new brewery that they have, we will get some of their own beers over here in Sweden at some point. I've not even really seen their beers very much in Copenhagen where they've got the free market. I've not really seen many of the Verdant beers making their way over here. I think mainly they are kind of sticking to the UK. Even in Glasgow actually, even even back home in Glasgow or Edinburgh, it's quite different. It's quite difficult to get a hold of the Verdant stuff. I mean I was able to get them through the Hopknocker in Durham quite easily 
but yeah, otherwise it's quite difficult to um, to get a hold of them. So um, yeah, that's all you need to know. Let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer. But make sure if you get the chance, you do try some of the Verdant beers, and of course, Garage Brewing are a very capable brewery as well. So as you can see, this one is a 440 milliliter can, which is kind of standard these days. I'm not sure what the idea behind the kind of plastic sheep is with this one. Um, I'm really really not sure about this. Um, I don't know if, I actually don't even know what Passata Sticks is meant to be. It didn't say on the website what the idea behind this name was, so if any of you are watching from uh, Barcelona or any from Spain or Catalonia or whatever, um, do let me know what the idea behind the name is. Is it a play on words in uh, Catalan or Spanish or something? I really don't know actually, but yeah, just a, a blue plastic sheep. It's had a bit too many blue Smarties or something. It's quite a weird label, actually, but fair enough. As long as the beer's good, we're not going to judge them on the artwork. So, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. I'll tell you straight away, when you open this beer up, I'm pretty sure there's a wee bit of mosaic in this one. Maybe a wee bit of galaxy as well, I'm not sure. So, yeah, look at that. That looks very, very nice. So there's about two-thirds of it in the glass just now and as you can see it's poured a lovely kind of bright hazy yellow as you would expect from this uh, from this particular beer style yeah this is definitely one of the kind of brighter yellow coloured um, New England IPAs that you're going to come across it's not the brightest yellow one that I've come across you can get some of them where they're pretty much you know pale they look you know they're basically like very kind of bright, almost luminous yellow in a way, but this one is definitely one of the kind of um, getting there brighter yellows. You could see the head on this one was about a finger, and it's a frothy kind of cream coloured head. It's definitely not perfect white. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, it does look um, really quite nice actually. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see it does look um, really quite nice. So, yeah. Big thumbs up to uh, both of these breweries here. Nothing overall surprising about the about the, the appearance, not the experience. Brain's not working today. So yeah, let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Oh yeah. That looks really nice. Uh, or smells really nice. What is going on with my vocabulary today, guys? This is nuts. Um, but yeah, when you smell this beer, Straight away, it just it comes across, the malt base comes across as being very smooth. You've got that lovely white, bready, wheaty sort of thing in there. It's not really bitey in terms of the wheat. It really comes across as a very kind of smooth, just white, bready sort of thing there. Um, you don't get any of that kind of, is it right to say, the sort of astringency, the kind of... I don't think you really get very much astringency from this beer in terms of its wheaty characteristics. It really just comes across as quite straight up and very smooth and white bready. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. Um, you can pick up a little bit of the OT notes in this one. At the front of the nose, you can pick out a little bit of that OT creaminess, which is nice. There's maybe a wee bit of a kind of biscuity quality to this beer. That'll be covering up the booze in this one, of course. But um, yeah, it does smell, actually pretty damn nice. The malt base is, is quite well balanced in with everything else, but I'm finding the more I smell of this, the more I start to get the wheat out of it. So I might have told you a lie with that thing I said about the wheat being quite smooth. The more and more I smell of it, the more my nose kind of saturates and gets more of that kind of, gets a bit more of a kind of bitey wheaty note out of it, which is interesting. But yeah, it's not too prominent, I would say. Um, yeah, I really like how that... Um, that aroma goes together. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, and the um, on the green side of the hops, it's got a little bit of earthiness. There's a good bit of floral character to this one and a wee bit of grassiness, but I would really say that green side of the hop leans towards that nice kind of floral aromaticity. It's not quite spicy, but it really does have a little bit of that kind of floral pungency to it, if that makes sense. And on the fruity side of things, um, this one's got a really nice combination, actually. I do think there's mosaic in this. There is just something that's telling me there's mosaic in this beer. Um, you can get a nice little bit of that juicy kind of tangerine note at the front of the, the nose if you like, but then behind that there are some stronger kind of uh, tropical notes in there. I'm not sure, it could be Galaxy, because there's something, there's a bit of a passion fruity quality to this one and it comes across as a little bit pungent, so it could either be Galaxy or maybe 
Idaho 7. It, you know, Idaho 7's got a bit more complexity to it and it's a little bit softer and I'm, this one's got a little bit of complexity to the tropical fruit so I'm kind of drawn as to whether it would be a Galaxy or Idaho 7. It's definitely not Simcoe, it's not kind of creamy and milky enough to be Simcoe I don't think. Because Simcoe's just a very soft, light passion fruit, very straight up, whereas the other hops have got a bit more um, <clears throat> tropical fruit complexity to them. But yeah, a bit of passion fruit in there, and you are getting a little bit of a kind of mangoey, papaya, um, apricotty type note to this beer as well. But some lovely um, tangerine oranges in there as well. And there is a wee bit of a slight kind of limey, gooseberry sort of thing coming off this too. There could be three hops in here, it could be. Um, I don't think it's straight up citra and mosaic this one, it doesn't strike me as being citra like but there might be, it could be like Idaho 7 or Galaxy citra and mosaic, it might be a triple hopped beer this one come to think of it, which is, you know, that is common enough, because there is just something, that little gooseberry sort of limey note that this beer has, the sort of very lighter tropical fruits. There is something that just says to me, maybe Citra, about that, and that would explain a little bit of the tropical fruit complexity that's in there as well, the sort of uh, lighter apricotty kind of note. So yeah, it's got a lovely combination of a slightly stronger tropical fruit, a bit of a lovely kind of lighter juicy one, and then some of those uh, lighter orangey tangerine qualities as well. But a very nice smelling beer, this one. Um, not the most pungent smelling of uh, New England IPAs that I've come across, but I'm sure it will be very nice. I just want to check the percentage of this one. Um, does it say, because, is it, no, oh, this is, I think I told you lies at the start of the video, because I had it in my head, it was um, 8%, but it says it's 9% here, so I'm sorry, I did tell you a lie at the start of the video. This one is a 9%. Um, double IP. That's kind of bordering um, on the triple. And this is one of the things I've always felt about these hazy beers, is once you start to go above 8.5%, that's when you start to struggle a little bit with these to cover some of the booziness. So bear that in mind. I'm curious to see how these guys manage it. But let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Passata Sticks, um, a hazy New England double IP, whatever you want to call it, coming in at 9% ABV, brewed at Garage Beer Company in Barcelona and Catalonia, and Verdant Brewing from Falmouth in Cornwall in England. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull, salud. I need to learn how to say cheers in Catalan as well, actually, because I review a lot of beers from Catalonia. But yeah, um, I will say straight away with this one, this is a nice beer. Um, the malt base is very simple and straightforward in this. I like how that um, kind of combines and goes together. I really like that about this beer. Yeah, this is really... Um, I like this one. There's just something, one of the first impression I have of this is that it's very light. For a 9%er, it's actually very light and almost wet in its mouthfeel. That's not really what I expected from this one at all. It just, it really has a degree of crispness to it, which is very nice. Um, so I really like the mouthfeel of this one. You know, kudos to, um, to Garage and Verdant for pulling off something like this. And in fairness, I have noticed this with a couple of the, um, sort of New England type IPAs recently. I mean, I think it was Amundsen from Norway. I've noticed that their beers are getting a little bit more like this as well, whereas before they used to be really kind of thick. There's just a lovely sort of cleanliness about the New England IPAs at the moment. They are just starting to go less from being big and thick and soupy to actually being a little bit more kind of crisp and drinkable. A lot of the Nordic breweries, there is a trend of putting like a little bit of Pilsner malt in the malt base to... Um, you know, there is a little bit of that. There is a, a kind of um, a trend of putting Pilsner malt in the malt base just to crispen them up, and it's it's actually very nice. I mean, you can understand this with um, a beer from Barcelona, because obviously Spain is really very hot compared to um, to somewhere like here, the south of Sweden. So you can understand why these beers are a bit lighter in the mouthfeel, and it's it's quite a common thing actually to go across different countries and notice um, trends in the mouthfeel actually. So. Um, but I have to say, I think the other Spanish, with the other Spanish beers that I've had before, be it from the Basque land, um, Catalonia, or other places like Madrid, I haven't noticed too much of a difference. I think this is the first one where I've noticed it, but it will be a bit more prominent because this thing is a big 9% monster. So, yeah, that's another point to make about this beer. Mm. 
But yeah, I will say, another solid beer from uh, Garage and from uh, Verdant. And it's not surprising if you know these breweries. So um, yeah, kudos to both of them. So yeah, let's try and focus on that flavour then. So straight away, the middle of your palate is just blanketed with that lovely kind of white bready, wheaty note. You can definitely feel a little bit of that that kind of lighter pale malt in there. If you go towards the back of the palate, you've got a little bit of that kind of wheaty bitiness. And it's not too prominent. I mean, as I've always said, when it comes to these hazy uh, beers, you're always going to inevitably compare them to the American ones, the Trilliums, the Treehouses, the, the Hill Farmsteads and the Alchemists. So the Alchemist ones are the more farmhousey. The Trillium ones are the more wheaty and bitey, the Treehouse ones are the more kind of oaty and creamy, and the Hill Farmsteads I've not tried yet. So this one is definitely a little bit more like a kind of Trillium type New England IPA. It's, got, it's definitely more of a kind of bitey, uh, it's got a little bit more of that wheaty, bitey sort of thing, but at the same time there is a bit of crispness there. I really wouldn't be surprised with this one if there's a bit of Pilsner malt mixed in with the, um, with the sort of uh, wheaty qualities of this beer. I really like how that... Um, how that goes together. So yeah, this is this is this is nice. This one I like that that back of the palate. But as you come further forward, you don't really feel the the malt base thickening up in this one. I find the malt base on this just nice and light and crisp. But as you reach the kind of front part of the palate, there's some nice kind of um, oaty creaminess there, which is um, which is really very nice. Um, it's not big and thick and creamy, it's just a little bit of a light creaminess but it gives you a good balance between the more crisp aspect of the malt base and it just thickens the beer up a little bit before you move into the, the fruity side of things actually which is good. But yeah, if you go into the very centre of your palate you can detect there is a wee bit of that kind of biscuity, McVitie's digestive type biscuity quality there. For a 9 percenter this is frighteningly drinkable. This is ridiculously easy to drink for a nine percenter. So if you try this, be careful. You might want to share the can with a friend because it is, it is stupidly easy to drink this. You're only going to drink one of these, to be honest. Um, but yeah, the malt base on this, it doesn't really do anything surprising, but it's very nicely crafted. And as I say, I really appreciate that kind of crisp quality that it has. On to the hoppy side of things then. Back corners of the palate, there is a wee bit of earthiness there. I think that's another telltale sign of mosaic but as you come further forward along the sides of the palate you can feel that just smoothening up a little bit pardon me and then you get some nice kind of floral aromatic notes on the front corners of the tongue then around the very front curve of the palate it's just a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy then behind the front curve of the tongue that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer so for me, um, this is where the beer really starts to kind of shine a little bit. This is where you've got some really interesting things going on. So if you go to the back of that oily bubble, that's where you start to get some of these darker tropical fruit notes coming out of the beer. But the way you do get that darker tropical fruit there, so a bit of a passion fruity, um, a wee bit of a kind of passion fruity, um, juiciness to it. And it's, it's actually, it's, it's a combination between like a wet and juicy passion fruity note there. I really like how that comes out of this one. I'm really drawn on whether this would be... There's something makes me want to say it's Idaho 7. Um, I can remember Galaxy quite well and um, it just doesn't, there, there's just something, it just doesn't strike me as being Galaxy that's in this beer from the flavour, from the aroma. It did a little bit but I really think it might be Idaho 7 that's in this one. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other hops that it, it could be um, that are getting quite popular. I'm really, I'm really not sure. I mean, it could be some of the New Zealand ones like Malteri or something like that, but um, I think that's quite unlikely, to be honest with you. But the way that, that the, the passion fruit comes out in this, I really like that, actually. I think this may well be Idaho 7 or something. So... Yeah, pay attention to that part of the beer. The way the passion fruit comes out is very nice. But as you come further forward, the beer it very quickly moves to be more of a kind of um, it has got a wee bit of a mango quality to it but I think the passion fruit it starts off quite strong at the back and then just softens up a little bit as you come further forward a little bit of a mangoey quality there um, and then you get a wee bit of you do get a wee bit of an apricotty papaya type thing but I find that quite minimal the passion fruit is quite prominent there but as you reach the front part of the palate it really sort of changes to be more of this kind of juicy tangerine but slightly oily orange actually and I really like that 
about this beer to be honest. Yeah, I want to say there's a little bit of a, um, there is a wee bit of that kind of limey quality. If you go to the very tip of your tongue and just behind the, the sort of grassy part of the beer, it is actually almost quite zesty on the front of the palate, but, you know, not overly. We do get a little bit of zestiness out of this. For me, there is a wee bit of that kind of darker um, limey quality to this beer too, which is quite nice. Could there, you know, could there be a little bit of um, equinox? Or something in this because the lime actually does have a little bit of prominence to it. That could be the other thing that would be in here might be a little bit of equinox. So yeah, I always like playing guess the hops with these beers. It's always a little bit of fun. But equinox is um, a really nice kind of um, limey hop, and of course you've got Malteke from uh, New Zealand, which has got that lovely um, limey quality to it as well. The sort of uh, co limey limey cocktail type thing. So it could you know it could also be that, but I think it's more likely to be um equinox, to be honest. Um but yeah the, the flavours in this beer are really nice. So I'd say the fruitiness, like I say, a bit of passion fruit, some other kind of softer tropical notes in there, but I'd say the passion fruit is more prominent. A wee bit of a kind of tangerine sort of thing, but um quite a bit of I do get quite a bit of lime coming out of this one actually. So I'm almost tempted to say um that it's it's equinox that's in this as well, but um, I might well be wrong in the hops. I always just like playing guess the hops with these. It's a bit of a fun thing to do when you're reviewing the beers, of course. But yeah, the main thing to take away is that this is quite a nice um, double IPA. This, I mean, at nine percent, it's stupidly easy to drink, um, and the fruits do have a little bit of that kind of bite to them, and it suits the sort of boozier side of the beer too. So it's, it's got a nice kind of bite to it, the flavour of this one. It reminds me of a few of the Trillium ones that I've had. Um, so in terms of the mouthfeel then, um, I would say that this beer, it's quite nice and um, it really is quite nice and um, sort of, it's at the kind of it's at the middle point of mid-body. It's really not that heavy in terms of its body, this beer, and that would suit a place like Barcelona, of course, because of the temperatures. So yeah, a nice kind of mid-body beer. The carbonation um, has a little bit of crispness to it, this one, which I really like. Um, and overall, I'd say the, mouth, the mouthfeel on this one, it's, as I say, kind of straight up mid-body. There's a good wetness and crispness to this beer overall, which is quite surprising for a 9%er. So in terms of the hoppy bitterness, I think this one is maybe about 40 or 50 IBUs. It's a little bit heavier than the standard um, 30, but it's not going to blow the head off you in terms of its bitterness. The malt base, like I said, is quite smooth. There's a wee touch of sweetness to it, but a good level of crispness. And the fruity side of the beer also has a nice little bit of bite to it as well, which I um, really quite like. But I mean, overall, this is a really, really nice... Um, New England Double IPA. It's got that lovely crisp mouthfeel. Like I said, that's the main thing that makes this one stand out to me. So if you ha if you like a nice kind of crisp New England Double and you want a little bit more of a kind of bitey, fruity quality to this one, this is one that's definitely going to uh, tick the boxes for you. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one is the Passata Sticks, a nice kind of crisp, drinkable New England Double IPA coming in at nine percent from Garage Beer Company in Barcelona in uh, in Catalonia in Spain and uh, Garage Beer Company from, uh, or sorry, and Verdant, Verdant Brewing from Falmouth and Cornwall in the southwest of England. And a really nice small part here. So um, yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Verdant Brewing and from Garage Beer Company as well. You will see me review more beers from both of these breweries at some point soon. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out Verdant. Make sure you check out Garage Beer Company. Check out my social media and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, Skull, Salud. Make sure you check out this beer. Cheers.